to remember the key? I got the key. Oh, good. All right. We're going to go flying in a neat airplane here at Air Venture Oshkosh. I'm Dan Johnson speaking today, or getting ready to go fly today with Todd Ellison of Quicksilver Aeronautics, the new name of a company that we've known for many, many years. This is the Quicksilver 2S on floats. That's correct. Amphibious puddle jumper floats. Puddle jumpers and amphibious. Uh, yep, we got wheels. So tell me a little bit how that's going to work here. We're going to take off on land, and then we're going to go land on water. That's right. How's that all work on this airplane, Todd? Well, it's pretty simple. We've got uh, uh, we've got the controls all within reach here. We've got our retractable landing gear right ah, here. Okay. And we've got our locks right here for locking the gear down or up in this case, if you're going to be flying on water. And that's about it. Okay, so once you pull the gear up by just, of course we can't do it here right now, but you would push this all the way up. Right, and that retracts the nose. And gear. then you use these two knobs or these two handles down here to lock them in place so the wheels stay up. That's is correct. that right? Yeah. Okay. They'll stay up just on this control by themselves. This is just a safety. Okay. Uh, but it's more important for when the wheels are down, so that they get locked and don't accidentally retract. You know, while you're trying to taxi on land. I see. Okay. So they lock them both either way, whichever That's way they're in. This lock. I always love yep. the way these seats kind of lay back a little bit, and they're sort of like a barca lounger of the air. But uh, here we've got a joystick that both of us use, uh, right between the pilot. Uh, controllable uh, rudder pedals uh, move the move the rudders obviously and ailerons just all conventional control in every way except you got this glorious view here the bugs in your face or in your teeth the air in your hair space on your face that kind of thing lots of room in there too by the looks it is pretty roomy I mean, uh, both you guys uh, so big guys fit in here pretty well though that's right yeah it's one of the things that changed on this model uh, with the, the sport 2s is four inches wider in the cockpit which doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, it does make a difference when you have two broad shoulder guys. Well, you got all the elbow room in the world, literally, and uh, so that's cool. Throttle handles on the outside of each seat right here. Yep, that's uh, right. right in front of my hand, and Todd's got one on his side as well. That makes this thing a pretty capable training aircraft too, doesn't it, Todd? Yeah, it's ideal for training. You know, as our Sport 2, uh, another version, cable version of this model, is one of the most widely used trainers that we've ever had and uh, train probably more pilots than I can count. And this is a model that uh, is just improved on that version. It has all the same nice training features. That one. These things have sold to all kinds of people. I know for a fact, for example, that movie star John Travolta has two of them, or had two of them anyway. And, uh, so all kinds of people have flown in Quicksilvers. You mentioned the number of people that have been trained in it, you can't count them. I'm not sure anybody very else in the aviation. Right probably more people have been trained in an airplane that looks very much like this one than any other light plane I can think of. Yep, it's got quite a history uh, of uh, training people. I personally have used it for 25 years. That's how I started out in aviation was uh, with the MXL2 Sport, and it's a 503, but uh, did a great job, and this one's just a little bit uh, bigger engine on it but so what are we using to power this particular aircraft on floats and amphibious floats at that usually requires a little more of them to make it work yeah we have the 582 rotax 65 horse water cooled engine on this one and then we also on the float planes we upgrade the gearbox to a c gearbox or an e gearbox so and what does that do for us that will slow down the reduction uh or, or the reduction is changed so that the prop runs a little slower we can extend the blades and that'll give us a little more thrust to get out of the water quicker. And you can also put a clutch on the C-Drive so that on the water the prop is spinning. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a really nice feature. That's from AirTech out of Louisiana there. They make a clutch system that helps um, that helps to uh, keep, keep the, the engine at an idle for startup and then also for uh, if you want to go into like a parking, like a dock or whatever, you know, you have to shut it off, turn it on if you don't have that clutch. Uh, but yeah. with the clutch, it'll go down and, and uh, it works fine. Yeah. Now, does this plane still come out as a kit to where you're assembling it yourself, the tubing holds and that type of thing? You bet. Yeah, it's it's what Quicksilver is known for is a is an easy to assemble kit. Everything is bubble packed. I can show uh, a board over here that, that shows how the kits come and the assembly manuals are real straightforward so even a first-time builder can assemble this aircraft. So what's a typical time for a first-time builder with a build time? Yeah, you're looking at around 100 hours. There is some give and take there, to, you know, based on skill, but uh, we have tech support at the factory and we can walk pretty much anybody through the assembly of the aircraft in 100 hours right in that area. I once wrote a story about uh, 
uh, owner's man, uh, the manuals to a build an airplane, an assembly manual, and it turned out to be the biggest project of writing I ever did because I got manuals from about 40 companies and there was no hope of reading all of them. So I ended up flipping through them and just trying to pick up something from each one and Quicksilver's manuals I ended up rating as number one. The way they are put together is so clear that even a non-mechanical guy like me could have put the airplane together and in fact I have done that. But the only kit I ever built was a Quicksilver kit. Wonderful manual but more than that the way the parts are packaged. You don't get bags of bolts and, and tubes strapped together with packing tape or something. How are they packaged to a, a builder and why is that packaging useful? Well, it starts with all the hardware gets put on about a, a three by two foot board and uh, then it's, it's heat shrunk to that board with part numbers on, on all the different components. So it's easy to lay those out, you know, when you're getting ready to do the assembly. The tubes are on just a bigger board. It's about a five by four foot board. It's cardboard and they're heat shrunk on there with the part number. So when you go to your manual and it calls out for five different items, you just go and pluck them off the boards and put that assembly together and uh, it's as easy as that. Everything is pre-drilled, uh, very little drilling. You might have to do a little bit of uh, pilot holes, but it's pre-built, pre-bent. The fabric is, is all pre-sewn. So it is basically like a big erector set. Just taking the parts and putting them together. The beauty of that uh, shrink wrap packaging that they use is that one of the first thing you do with a kit is you go inventory all the parts to make sure you got everything that you're going to need to do the job. And that's a big duty with a lot of airplanes. With the Quicksilver, they're all right there. You just lay out your sheets of cardboard shrunk wrap and you can see all the parts. Then you just cut out the one you need. And all the rest of them stay right there and don't get lost amidst all the other ones. It's a kind of a marvelous system that they developed oh, many years ago now. I've forgotten, but 10 or 15, 20 years ago something. So a lot of people have used that and been able to build a lot of these airplanes. And initially they came out in different languages as well. Because I remember in France, we were over there and there they were building it. And I'm saying they can't. And they had that in, in French. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty much, this is not just an American company, is it, Todd? This is a worldwide phenomenon. How many countries do you think Quicksilvers are flying in today? What would you guess? Well, it always surprises me when you get a parts order from a country that you never <laughs> thought we were in before, but they are scattered out. In, you know, in the last 30 years, they're scattered out pretty much everywhere. I'll bet you they're in 100 countries or more. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm I mean, sure they're Quite a phenomenal acceptance of this type of airplane. They're used at resorts just like this with floats on them to fly tourists around. They're used in working conditions with ag spraying equipment, which you also can offer in countries where that's permitted. Uh, they're used as work airplanes in some countries. Uh, they're just everywhere. They're all over the planet. And, and Todd has been all over the planet, too, because <laughs> I remember doing a story and he had, was it Bahrain that you had to go to Todd? That uh, was Qatar. Qatar. So yep. Had... Yep. I've been around uh, just China and Qatar and different places just supporting the assembly or doing a checkout or like a final inspection where a customer just wanted to have a factory representative come there to make sure that they did it all right. So pretty cool. So we're looking at the one here called the 2S. That's because it's got these struts on it. And for a lot of people, that is a more conventional aircraft. Uh, but the wire brace ones are the, probably the bigger seller total. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a fairly new model. Uh, it does do uh, dominate the sales at this moment, but uh, there's nothing, that, the thing I think that appeals to most people is you look at it and it looks, you know, more stout than like the cable brace. But in a structural analysis, you know, they're very similar in strength. Uh, so there's no real big advantage other than people just like the look of the struts. It's what they're familiar with from seeing other airplanes. Yep. Yeah, but from my point, I can get in and out of a hangar. The problem with that king post is That's it's right. like 10 foot 6. If you got a wire brace it, you got to wire brace it on top too to make the whole structure work. This thing just slides in and out of the hangar. No that's right. So these are very yeah, popular. That's an advantage. Well, once again, we've teased people with what I hope is a good bit of information, but in order for them to get more information, from the company name is Quicksilver Aeronautics, and uh, where should they go, though, to find more information about this airplane, Todd? Well, I guess first stop would be our website, QuicksilverAircraft.com, and there you'll get all the contact information, and in, uh, you, can, you can request other uh, info packs. Uh, if you don't want to look on the website, we have anything you need there. And again, I've gotten to have the pleasure to fly, I think, every single Quicksilver aircraft ever made at one time or another. Not nearly as good at doing it as Todd you mean, is. You but mean Models, yes. Yeah, yeah, I guess that would be quite a, quite a big statement, but okay. Every model they've made, 
I'm not that good at flying any of them compared to Todd, but they're all easy to fly. And all those have been reported on my website, which is bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks so much for joining us here today at Air Venture Oshkosh. Thanks.